Hi everyone, Miss Abby here. As you know, winter break is coming up and around this time there's a lot of different holidays. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas. A lot of those holidays are about giving and connecting and this felt like the perfect story to read around that time. It's called Red Shoes, A Dazzling Journey by Karen English and illustrated by Ebony Glenn. Let's find out how this pair of shoes connects people in different ways. Red Shoes. Red shoes, dazzling, perched on a pedestal in the shop window as if on a throne. I want those, Nana, Malika says to her grandmother as they pass the shop. We'll see, Nana says with a wink. Looks like you could use a new pair. Surprise! Red shoes nestled in a shoebox under tissue paper on the kitchen table. Nana smiles her secret smile. Malika laughs and slips them on quick, quick. Red shoes walking click clack click across the floor on Malika's feet. Swish, swish, swish around the living room. Click, clack, clack down the hall. Then out the door and around the block, Malika goes to show off her new red shoes. Carefully, carefully on the first day of school, Malika walks in big galoshes that hide her shoes from the rain. She wants to keep them dry when she jumps in puddles. Red shoes dancing on daddy's feet when they go to auntie's wedding in the fall. Red shoes kicking cousin Jamal under the table at Nana's Christmas dinner as he tries to snitch Malika's buttery biscuit. Red shoes stomping home when Malika and her best friend Keisha have a fight. Malika is mad and sticks to it. Red shoes jumping double dutch at Keisha's birthday party after they make up. Then, oh no, red shoes pinching when Malika squeezes them on to wear to Nana's birthday dinner at a restaurant. My shoes are too small, Malika says sadly. And all through dinner, her red shoes don't let her forget that her feet had grown. Red shoes in the window at the resale shop where Nana and Malika have taken them to be resold so somebody else can enjoy them. Softly, softly, Malika says goodbye to her wonderful red shoes. They were her favorite shoes ever. Who do you think is going to buy them next? Inazia spies the red shoes dazzling in the shop window. She knows just the little girl who will love them. Now they are squeezed into her luggage bound for Africa. Red shoes under Inazia's bench in the marketplace where she call, sells her clay pots. They are waiting for Amina, the girl who fasted half the month of Ramadan, the girl who deserves a special gift. And here she comes at last, holding her mother's hand. Inazia smiles down at Amina. I promised you a gift. And here it is. Red shoes are passed to Amina's waiting hands. Thank you, Auntie, she says. They are so beautiful. Then later, red shoes riding on the trotro on Amina's lap. Back at home, Amina's little sister, Halima, rushes to see the gift for the girl who fasted half the month of Ramadan because someday she hopes to do the same. Amina lets her try them on, 
but just for a little bit. Halima will have them soon enough when Amina's feet grow too big, and Halima's feet grow big enough. Now the red shoes are tucked safely under the bed, waiting to be worn on very special days. Meanwhile, back on the other side of the ocean, Malika wonders, whatever happened to my beautiful red shoes? I wonder if someone is wearing them right now. So here's Amina wearing her red shoes. I really like that story because it's about connection and it's about generosity, which we like to have, especially around the holidays, but in a little bit of a different way. It's not about giving somebody a gift that you know, but it's about kind of passing along something that was special for one kid to another kid. I hope that you enjoyed that book. Bye.